You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 2nd, 2022. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have arrived at our 666th episode. So hail Satan and stop being so mean. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Why are people so mean? Upon mature reflection, Blue Gal, I think the phrase 666th is bad writing on my part. And I really should have wordsmithed that a little bit better because I stalled out my my glottal stops uh, a sentence ago, and now I have to reboot. So why don't you talk for about half an hour while I rest up from all that effort? Yeah, why, why are people so mean, Drift Glass? I know. People are so mean. People, And, of course, <laughs> of course, Twitter did its thing. Social media did its thing. You know, the... the Fuck your feelings couple got Mm -hmm. repurposed with. Repurposed many times. Please leave us alone during these trying times. (laughs) No, no. You you invented me. I'm I'm listening to uh, uh, historian Nikki Hemmer, I believe her name is, in her book about the 1990s Mm -hmm. on a wonderful podcast called Know Your Enemy, which is a deep dive into conservatism. And I mentioned her last week because she went on Charlie Sykes' show, I think. Mm-hmm. And Charlie Sykes was, really? The 90s happened? And there was a guy named Newt Gingrich? <laughs> this is yeah. all news to me. Oh, I was there, of course, and I didn't have a picture. But but it it really is a, a radical decade full mm-hmm. of radical mm-hmm. people making all kind, laying the groundwork for everything you see around us. And that's and all of that is true. All of that is historically verifiable. It was all in the news. It was all in the open. And that's why it just, I choke on every time some person who was part of that game part of setting up trump for being trump pretends they didn't know about it or didn't didn't see it coming or weren't a part of it you know before um frank luntz was on msnbc i learned from this podcast he was ross perot's pollster and before perot he was pat buchanan's pollster oh my god these scumbags have been working on this plan forever and all of the people who you see in the, the seats that should be owned by liberals, all the never Trumpers <laughs> who were there, who were on the ground, who were generals and colonels in this army during the battle, all swearing they had no idea. Mm-hmm. I'll take you collectively all at your word. You have no fucking idea what you're talking about. You don't know what Republicans want or think, and you have no idea why liberals do what they do. Why are you being paid to have an opinion on television? And I'll leave it at that. I have two questions for you, Drift Glass, though. Sure, Blue Gal. And they're they're so broad that we could spend three hours talking about them. Are they, so are they inherently gonna... satanic? Because no, I really but, think we but should. It, uh, I read an article, and I'm sorry, I can't even remember to begin where it came from, but talking about how making the argument that right. the 90s were the decade for music, period. 90s, music, okay. 90s right. music, amazing. Okay. Okay. And I, it would be interesting to go back and look at times of political repression Ooh. and throughout history and see yeah. whether the arts compensated for that in some way. Um, that's Which side are you on? One. Which side right. are you on? This, son? Right. But, yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's, it's interesting to have a president that is as old as he is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. because he remembers 1968. And so everything that happens in terms of political disruption, his perspective is I survived 1968 we yeah. all thought the world was literally going to end yep, because yep. everyone was being shot. So, uh, and then the other thing that I, I just hear when I'm, when I'm hearing you go start off on that rant is all seats belong to liberals. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> so the default setting yeah, for yeah. network cable news, obviously yeah. we don't live in that universe. We're not adjacent to it. We'll never yeah. get there. It'll never happen. So I'm not wishing for something I can't have. But you can't live in a, a future that you might want if you can't imagine the future you might want. You have to imagine space travel before you get to space travel. Right, right. And in a healthy universe, the people who are actually right about shit would be talking about that shit on television and on the radio and the newspapers. Jennifer the Rubin who, drift glass. I know, I know. You know, <laughs> and I remember the, the 60s. 
barely. Yeah. And I remember yeah. Space Flight and I remember Walter Cronkite. And they yeah. didn't have a bunch of plumbers and used mm-hmm. car salesmen at NASA commenting on what the rocket is doing and what taking. They brought the experts on to talk right. about what they know. And they didn't um, bring a, a space science denier on no, for balance. For, for balance. Yeah. Yeah. Moon schmoon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> and I, I had a, an occasion to dip into um, the history of Meet the Press this week for for post I writing. I write stuff. I don't write it for any magazines or anything because nobody's going to hire this guy. But <laughs> I, I, I wrote about Meet the Press and Meet the Press and Chuck Todd and all that nonsense that's going on. And I won't have anything more to say about that. But that Meet the Press has a Star Wars prequel problem, which the original Meet the Press was kind of awesome. Yes, it, it was. It was a panel of journalists who meet a public figure and ask mm-hmm. them questions. Mm-hmm. And you had like Martin Luther King on there fielding questions yeah. from it shoe leather journalists. It was like a mini press conference. Yeah. That was under control, not noisy, not shouting for questions. And you could get into depth with one person. Right. Yes. And then, like George Lucas... <laughs> they took all the things that everyone hates about it, but impress the people that are his circle of friends mm-hmm, and made mm-hmm. prequels out of it that everyone hates because, no, you you forgot what made you good in the first place. And so instead of actually having a news panel program where people of public interest are being interviewed and cross-examined by actual journalists, you have guests that Chuck Todd himself has said, I don't push these people if they lie to me. I know they're lying to me. I know they're crazy, but I can't say that or imply it because they won't come back on my show. And then the panel doesn't talk to these people. They talk to each other. It's mm-hmm. Rich Lowry, you know, and a bunch of other zombies jerking each other off for 30 minutes on subjects that they have opinions about, but fuck, everybody has opinions about things. And that's the universe I wish we lived in. And I refuse to not to stop imagining a better universe where we could be if simply you were to substitute the people who know what they're talking about for the people who have no idea or who lie about it. Well, and there was nothing more clarifying in my mind this week about Meet the Press when uh, Keith Olbermann was celebrating that it's possible Chuck Todd might be leaving the desk of yeah. Meet the Press. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah, but Kristen Welker is going to replace. Right. And so you have to understand that a stenographer who nods at lies is the format of the show. Right. And, and so and they're just there not you put, have it. That's it. That's the format of the show. They're not going to put anyone in that chair who won't do that. Right. And <clears throat> if you don't do that now, you will be trained to do that because that's what they want on that show. Right. Or else right. they wouldn't replace David Gregory with Chuck Todd. Right. Um, right. As, as far as the power of media actually goes, you had a really interesting point about the power of pictures this week. I did. And so did Charlie Pierce. But he didn't steal my ideas like some people steal your ideas, Drift. Right. This was, this was um, just something that both of us said that the image of top secret documents on the floor of Donald Trump's office being mm-hmm. laid out by FBI agents, as FBI agents throughout the decades have laid out drugs and guns and money and any other evidence found in a search at a crime scene. Them, you put the in a crime scene. You put the little L with the rulers on it to show the size of the document. You sh- you photograph it mm-hmm. as evidence found at the site, and that picture has had such an impact on. I, I, it's the photo of perhaps the decade. It, it's certainly the photo of the I year. I agree. I, that's it's pretty um, stunning. Um, yep. Yep. A president, former so-called president of the United States, has top secret documents clearly labeled with cover sheets that say top secret. Uh, Cover sheets that were never found in any of the search warrants done for Hillary Clinton on her computer or her home or anywhere. Uh, And and laid out. Um, And you said to me when I brought this up, this this picture has much more impact than conversations do. Because you see it. Mm-hmm. And you said, this is why churches have stained glass windows. You know, the, the imagery matters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and speaks to every level of intelligence and awareness and so forth. Uh, something I learned this week while looking at this, because Jim Jordan's House Judiciary Committee Twitter feed said, oh, it's so great that you 
you know, got those Time magazine covers, what a threat to national security, while tweeting the picture. Right. Doesn't. Yep. Doesn't. Doesn't understand. Boy, (laughs) there's a there's a real problem (laughs) with intelligence (laughs) there. Yeah. The box of Time framed Time magazine covers, which, as many people pointed out, was interesting because one the the Time magazine cover in the front was a real Time magazine cover, not one that Trump had made up. Right. Uh, That and the passports, which have been returned to Donald Trump, are there to indicate that the top secret documents were among his personal effects. Right. He shoveled them all in together. Yep. And three of the top secret documents were found in his desk. Yep. So the the point of that, from the standpoint of the FBI gathering evidence, and they would do this in a drug search, in a gun search, in a top secret search, whatever it is, is to provide context for evidentiary yeah. <laughs> process that when they present this in court, when the Department of Justice presents this in court, there is a context for the jury or the judge to see. Yep, the 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 cocaine was in her desk. Yes. She can't yep. not know it was there. Uh-huh. You know, and she's, she has the key. that It's in her desk. That's it. And all the attorneys who mm-hmm. swore there was a diligent search of exactly. the entire residence and we didn't find nothing. Yep. All of them are now shown to have lied under their lied to um, the FBI. officer of the court oath yep. to the FBI, all of yep. which are felonies, I believe. Yep. So all of Trump's lawyers who they swore- They need to quit. They need to quit and get well, a lawyer. They yep. Because they're about to become defendants or co-conspirators. Yes, or witnesses or defendants. Yeah. Yep. And the only picture, because you know I'm old, uh, that I can contrast this with that makes a political statement. Mm-hmm. With one image is Newsweek's cover of Rosemary Wood. Yep. A Nixon stretched secretary. Stretched out over the desk. <laughs> all the way across the desk, showing exactly how, what posture you would have to be in to accidentally erase tape mm-hmm. while you're doing your job. And that's, oh, that's ridiculous. She held that yeah. position for 18 minutes. Right. Really? Right. And that just, <laughs> boom. Oh, okay. He's lying. Clearly yeah. he's lying. That's the last, you know, that's the last nail in the coffin. He's got to go. And I also want to point out, you know, the number of times that Trump's story has changed, his shrinking, the, yeah. the period between yeah. points at which Donald Trump must change his story sh- is shrinking to hours rather than yeah. what used to be all the time, two weeks, right? We're going to have a plan in two weeks. We're going to have a health care plan in two weeks, a tax plan in two weeks, more about the wall in two weeks. And that was the memory hole that he could safely throw things down. Right. And by the time two weeks was up, the media was never asking, hey, it's two weeks. Where's your health care plan? No, they're they're cycling through every day. And what is the headline rather than providing any context? And Donald Trump knew that he knew what he was getting away with. Well, and and that's the way the every conservative I know in my personal life, that's how the brain works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you just maintain the lie long enough to get to the next lie. And that interval between the two is has to stay, you know, reasonable. And I, I'm reminded, since you put it that way, of Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day. Mm-hmm. If the, 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 it's, a, it's a countdown. The mm-hmm. interval keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter until, of course, Donald Trump blows up and you right. know, takes out right. the eastern seaboard with him. Um, because the lies can't move fast enough to catch up with what's happening in reality on the ground. And really... Um, the the people who are wandering around like Star Trek robots mm-hmm. or or Landru, you know, remember that the episode the Return of the Archons? Everyone mm-hmm, was a member mm-hmm. of the body, and once mm-hmm. Landru was zapped, they're all wandering. Landru, help us! Landru, think for us. Donald, tell us which lie we're supposed to believe. Newsmax yeah. is telling me one thing. Carl Rove's on on Fox telling me something else. Tell us what I'm supposed to believe. And the interval between those lies is getting shorter and shorter. And it's coming down to well, something. Something's going to go boom. Well, and and Donald still thinks it's a show yeah. and that he can manage it. You know, you and I have a show. CNN has a show. And Donald Trump has managed this whole event, his whole career. He's mm-hmm. managed it as a show. And so while, yes, this image is the most important thing of the year for sure, and possibly the decade, to my mind, the most significant statement made this year was by the judge in the Alex Jones case. And it relates perfectly to what's going on here. 
when Alex, when the judge said to Alex Jones, this is not your show. What you say here in court has to be true. Right. You can't just believe it's true. You can't assert that it's true. You can't say it's true and expect your 600,000 followers to nod in agreement. It has, there is truth and there is lying and you have to be truthful in this courtroom. And he couldn't do it. No, he couldn't do it. He couldn't it. do it. It, he couldn't it, do it broke him and it it's breaking Trump because there isn't that's he doesn't have that grasp on reality. No. And well, so and, I'm Well, at some point he's gonna be in a corner, a real corner. Yep. That he cannot get out of. And mm-hmm. that's when it's gonna get very, very weird and interesting and dangerous, frankly. Yeah, yeah. But but this shrinking of the time frame of having to change his story, the fact that everything that the Justice Department and the grand juries and the FBI are putting out are going through the courts. DOJ isn't coming to the microphone like, you know, William Kunstler. (laughs) He's not, it's not some sort of celebrity lawyer coming out and saying death to the West, right? The DOJ goes to court, they file papers, they file them at the last minute, which got yeah. a lot of lawyers on Twitter yeah. upset. Like, it's going to be 11.59, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, and, and Trump is not dealing with the kind of lawyers and the kind of judicial system he's used to dealing with. He's used to dragging yeah. Yeah. out a lawsuit from some Correct. subcontractor in Queens right. Right. and just breaking them with court costs and lawyers. Right. And the U.S. government has an infinite supply of lawyers and an infinite this- supply of time and money. This is why uh, in The Godfather, they didn't want to do narcotics. That's right. Right? Exact, exactly right. Because that attracts the, the wrong kind of attention. The government has a bottomless pit of money to fight narcotics. Mm-hmm. They, they won't spend that money on what gambling and prostitution. prostitution. Gambling and prostitution. Not, that was not it. even yeah. liquor, which are all you know just forbidden to them by the, by the pessimamente of the church. Right. Um, people right. think those are fine. You know, but narcotics is a different thing. This yeah. is a yeah. different thing order of criminality and he is not yeah. that that fact is catching up with people around him which is why yeah. they're losing their shit and lying like crazy and flailing or and can't... going completely silent yes <laughs> which is but, also silence speaks volumes when you hear when you know yeah. that Rand paul who is up for re-election in november isn't saying squat just shh, yeah. white noise baby yeah now he yeah. did teach all of them an important word i think which is rig yes yes right Right. Which brings us to your favorite person. <laughs> nah, she's not. No. Which one? Tom Cotton? Tom well, Cotton is not my favorite person. Well, Sarah but Palin, Sarah Palin Tom lost. Cotton. She yeah, lost. She mm-hmm. Poor Sarah Palin lost her election mm-hmm. in Alaska and had a meltdown and and adjusted her skirt and, and said, no, this is bad. And what was funny was Tom Cotton and a lot of other Republicans apparently are now blaming... Drift Glass's favorite bugaboo, ranked choice voting. Damn that ranked choice voting. Damn them. <laughs> Damn them. Which it turns out uh, MAGA Republicans in Alaska had set up as a jungle primary and ranked choice voting to get rid of Lisa Murkowski, who had voted uh-huh. for Trump's impeachment. Uh-huh. And Lisa Murkowski's not going nowhere. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> but Sarah Palin lost. And, and, she lost to a a woman, a young woman. I think she mm-hmm. just turned 39. Something like that, yeah. Future Representative Pet- Peltola is, is, just seems like a lovely person. Uh-huh. And she's pro-choice and she's um, pro-fish. Apparently, yeah. she, she has a grasp on issues, something called issues that her constituents care about. Weird, huh? And fishing licenses are a big deal in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And she knows about those things and is working to protect uh, the interests of Alaskans instead of quitting her job and going to where Arizona and New York City and yeah. Dancing with the Stars and Mass Singer and having a reality TV show and then coming back and saying, oh, I'd be honored to take a place of an open seat. Oh, yeah, that's OK. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and no. And there's a great deal of um, celebration among certain forward party uh, <laughs> fanatics about the efficacy of ranked choice voting and how this one thing proves, blah, 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 except it really doesn't. The The percentage of votes 
that future representative Peltola won after ranked choice voting was 51.5%. And Palin was 48.5%. You do the math and uh, she Palin was beaten by three percentage points, right? Before ranked choice voting, Representative Peltola had 40.2% and Palin had 31.3%. <clears throat> so Palin's percentage of the vote went way up. It almost worked. It almost mm-hmm. worked together. They just couldn't get loser half-term Governor Sarah Palin over the finish right. line. Who quit. Who quit. Quitting quit. a quitter. There are, there are issues with Sarah Palin that have nothing to do with ranked choice voting. Right. She quit her job when the people of Alaska had elected her mm-hmm. to do that. And there's some people that job. who yeah. just hate her and will vote yeah. for anybody but her. That is not... Yeah. A statement about we're not going to stop voting for extremists. That's right. No, no, no. But here's the fallout. And th- there's a weird little story here. There's a map that's been floating around on the forward Twitter stream about all of these states that would flip to blue with ranked choice voting, including Idaho and Utah. Yeah. Idaho, Utah, but not Alaska for some reason, which is very strange <laughs> because it just did. Um, and that's, and, the forward party does this. They spit out graphs and charts and, and and numbers and things with no context, with no mention of where they come from, with n- no explanation of the data underneath it. It's just like, here's a chart. This proves my point. Well, where are the links? Just shut up and read the chart. Well, this particular chart came from a guy named Tyler Bowen. And Tyler Bowen is an RNC National Committee member. He's a talking point USA Trump student asshole who invented this chart to scare the crap out of Republicans. Oh. It's a boogeyman. So this piece of fiction started out as a scare bait for wingnut cranks and ended up being sucker bait for the forward party, which is kind ah. of perfect. Mm-hmm. But Steve M., blessed be his name, points out that when he asked Tyler Bowen, where did you get these numbers? He got this psycho rant about, well, you know, Idaho and Utah have been overtaken by California politics. And What? <laughs> What? And he just sort of asserted that all this stuff was happening and that the, the, the leftists have taken over. And if we give them a half a chance to win, by God, they're going to crush us, which is all made up. Um, but the point being that if ranked choice voting and the rest of the um, paltry uh, platform of the forward party is ever instituted, it will never be instituted in Republican states. Right. You might get it in a blue state where people are like, yeah, let's try some stuff. But what Sarah Palin losing has done is cause the Republican Party almost entirely as one to line up and call it the next BLM. It's CRT. (laughs) It's Antifa. This ranked choice voting thing is a Democratic trick to try to steal the election from us righteous people. And so you can kiss off ever getting Republicans on board with your plan in Republican states because Republicans are (laughs) pro-extremist. They yeah. want extremists yeah. to win. And the states where they hold power, you're never going to get them to dislodge. So the whole thing well, is just... Your class, I blame Nate Silver for this oh. because the 270 to win website, and I yeah. don't know whether he set that up or not, but uh, 270 to win website allows you to play a game with the map of the United States and click states yes. and make them red or blue. Yeah. And Junior Dude loves this website. <laughs> Yes, he does. He does. And and it lets you play what if with American elections. You can go back. What I really love about it is you can go back to past elections mm-hmm. and look at wave elections and see right. which states carried when and how they flipped and so forth. And and I know that's what Junior Dude really likes to do. He likes to sure. see maps, you know, maps, the maps. 1960 election. How did that how did that pan out? Um and then he, you can also just play with it and look at polling. And, and again, he'll do that. He'll say, well, what if Pennsylvania flips to blue or what, it, you know, and so forth. Playing with it. But it allows uh, dudes on Twitter to pretend that Idaho is going to go blue and make a screenshot of it. And look here at my map <laughs> as proof mm-hmm. that rank chose and it. It's a Photoshop. I'm right. sorry. It is. Right. You made this. Um, I want to talk about Christy Nome for a minute. Uh, oh, absolutely. She, I, I don't think she knows where she's headed because uh, a constituent got very upset with her at a campaign event um, and let her know that saying that the rape of a 10-year-old was fake news didn't sit well with this constituent. Ooh, and yeah. she was not going to be uh, silent about it. 
And so Christy Nome just left the event, just walked out. Um, there are other Republican candidates who have scrubbed the word abortion from their websites. Yep. Blake Masters. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Just gone. gone. And, yeah, and wants just, to know, well, how come all these people are blaming me for having these extreme positions? And you see, well, you mean the screenshot of your website from yesterday? You yeah, that? right. Exactly. Exactly. Dude. <laughs> uh, Christy Nome spends an awful lot of time on her French tuck of her shirt into her jeans. Mm-hmm. Wearing the right kind of sneakers and having soft and luxurious hair. Mm-hmm. And I realize that women in politics have to spend way more time on their personal appearance than male candidates. That's wait, just no, a no, fact. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me John Fetterman doesn't spend hours a day getting Shining that look that down? Shining that chrome dome? <laughs> <laughs> Picking the right board shorts. And look, if I'm, if I'm in his state, I'm voting for him. I'm campaigning for him. I'm knocking doors for him. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying... You You're are being right. mistaken for him, Drift Glass. Yeah, I know. I know. Which Except is kind of cool, he's, actually. He's got about 60 pounds on you, I think, at least. He does. And, and, and about, uh, I think he's about an inch taller. And so I could be Yeah, he's his, an inch taller. He's look, if he six, needs nine, someone yeah. to stand in for you at events and, you know, have the and old ladies give like me a hug. And make you look like your normal height, he right. could stand next to you and right. make you look like your normal height. And, and the thing is, if I met him when I meet him, because eventually I will, all we're going to talk about is where do you buy your pants? Where do you buy your pants? It's a big deal. Yeah. Farm at home? Uh, me too, man. Come on, let's go. I understand they have the new uh, the new Levi's in today, right? Um, but and yeah, they're Christy all on Nome, the bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah, no, don't get me started. <laughs> or this will be a... the tall pants on the bottom shelf. Anyway, I Christy also Nome. want to thank Tim Miller, one of your bugaboos, another one of your bugaboos, Tim Miller, eh? your class, who uh, wrote an article um, reciting all of the things that I've been saying for two years about <laughs> when red makes me feel Donald good. Trump. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That all, where's all the money gone for congressional and Senate campaigns in the Republican Party? It's gone into Donald Trump's pocket. The House Ways and Means and the January 6th Commission and the House Oversight Committee have or will have shortly Donald Trump's financial records. Yeah. Of, from various sources. Uh, Ways and Means is getting taxes and Oversight is getting the um, accounting firm's uh, records. And I sure hope we're going to find out how much money Donald Trump gets from WinRed? Because well, I believe that it's not possible that he's getting nothing no. from uh, that organization that Jared set up. No, God, no, no. The, so everything we, they we'll do, wait to see. But it's as I said, banana Republicans. <laughs> it's going to be a bombshell if it turns out that the head and front runner in the Republican Party is personally profiting from every single candidate's fundraiser in yeah. the Republican Party. Yeah. The and money he's that scraping could be. off the top sure. of every single donation that goes to any Republican online. That which Trump is the most that and 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 makes it disappear. It, which is the most consistent through line of Donald Trump's entire life. Yeah, it's it, how it, can I it, squeeze it, yeah. the chumps for more money? That's yep. it. That's his yep. whole life. And yep. his his broken down, creepy, narcissistic, deranged personality comes from having as his highest virtue, scamming as many people as possible using a constant flow of lies to line his pockets. And that's it. Including his own attorneys. Yeah. Including everyone. Yep. Yeah. And he will not hesitate to throw his children under that, under that bus. I, if he thought for a minute he could get out of this scrape by offering Eric up as a sacrifice, yeah, wouldn't think right. twice. Abra- as Abraham, he would take all his kids to the mountaintop and offer them up. <laughs> all of them willing sure, to sacrifice them. Take them, yep. them, whatever you want. Yeah, just not me. Just don't take me. All right. Now, so, Drift Class, we, apparently we have a bunch of brand new allies. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to do a fast uh, quote, quote, and you tell me who said it, and then I'm going to say some stuff. I'm voting for DeSantis. Alex Jones. Very good. Time to turn the page on Trump. Oh, turn the page on Trump. I know that one. That's Laura Ingram. Yes. <laughs> uh, stop talking about Trump. I don't know. That's Ben Shapiro. Um, and pretty much half the people who you know listen to this podcast, I know, but I'm sorry. Uh, Trump is done. That was Ann Coulter, but you couldn't see her podcast unless you were a member of her Substack. That's right. Got to got to pay to see the. She used that as her sell through line. Trump's yeah. done. Yeah. And Trump indictment watch. Oh, that's Drudge. He's got uh, Trump in orange jumpsuit on yeah. his front page. Yeah. Now. Now, here's Amazing. my question. Here's my mm-hmm. question. And take this for the bitter, vindictive question that it is. <laughs> now, remember, the premise of the enemy of my enemy is my friend rule. 
states that once someone calls Trump a poopy head, they're automatically your ally. That's the All, Liz Cheney rule. That's the Liz Cheney rule. That's, that's the rule that was beaten into me by my allies all during the Trump years. Hey, the minute someone steps away from Trump, they're a fucking ally. So shut your mouth because the enemy of your enemy is your supervisor. They get to tell you how to run your party. They get to go on television and tell you all the shit you're doing wrong. They get to criticize liberals just like they've been doing their whole life. But the minute they step away from Trump, they're your ally. Shut your hole because it, we're all in this together. So according to the rule, all past transgressions are forgiven and forgotten. And you will get a stern scolding from on high if you go around promiscuously remembering stuff from the past. This is a directive from Liberal Central High Command. And it gets really confusing, especially when it comes to critters like Ann Coulter, who switches back and forth from pro-Trump to anti-Trump about once a month. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question. Is Alex Jones now my ally? Am I obliged to treat him respectfully and forget all that he has done? Is Laura Ingram my ally? Because she says... Turn the page on Trump. Write down the list all these people who are doing exactly what the never Trumpers did in 2016. Mm -hmm. They're not acting on principle. They're jumping from what they perceive to be a sinking ship that they built. And Onto a lifeboat. Uh, they're of, building a fleet they're building of lifeboats, lifeboats over and, and over if, again. Yeah. If these people are not my allies, then what's the line in history? Where's the moment in mm -hmm. history where, mm -hmm. and I know who doesn't get to draw that line. It's me. Right, right. Um, only people who are never Trumpers on MSNBC get to say who is forgiven and who is not. <laughs> Liberals who were right all along don't get to say shit. Our job is to yep. shut up and listen to Mona Sharon <laughs> tell Chris Hayes how the Democratic Party is fucking up. And if we step out of line, we must not love America or want to win because we would otherwise keep our trap shut and do what Mona says. Well, so drift honestly, glass, drift glass, both sides have issues with this. Let me tell you. Oh, really? Both sides. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm sitting down. I know down. this because the Washington Post's new editor, uh, whose name is Buxby, apparently needs to grow into her job a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, sure. Jay Rosen brought this up, and I'm quoting, uh, Notably in my discussions about the democracy team with Buxby and, and Witte, both deflected when asked whether threats to democracy are coming more from Republicans than Democrats. I mean, if it's Republicans who are doing it, if it's Democrats who are doing it, it's our job to call that out, mm -hmm. Buxby said. We are not partisan, Buxby no. added. We are trying to report what is accurately happening in the country. The reality of the situation is that the election system is very decentralized, and there's a lot of people who impact it. But the Washington Post is, quote, absolutely determined to be the place to come to understand that story. I see. I have a question. I, I said we need to send her some both sides don't bumper stickers, Drift Glass. And T-shirts. Don't forget <laughs> the T-shirt. That's our, that's our big <laughs> item. We get like three well, cents for every T-shirt we here, sell. Here, and you should go to Jay Rosen's Twitter stream and see that he provides a template for how to answer this question and still maintain journalistic quote unquote integrity, which is start with, we hold everyone to the same standard. That's fine. We hold mm -hmm. everyone to the same standard. And then you have to say, right now, Republicans are r screwing with democracy. Now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is the Washington Post, right? Yes, it is. Are they changing their motto from democracy dies in darkness to America, a land of contrasts? A land of contrasts and decentralized because, contrasts. Yes. Because this sounds yes. very much like someone who doesn't want the angry mob to come to their house and, and make them mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. So In Georgetown, and, is, yes. Right. And where I, where and, Tim Miller has had drinks a time or two. He has. And he can tell you the exact <laughs> restaurant and what he had for dinner and the kind of cocktail he had and the sunset. It's all very vivid. I, you know, Tim Miller is fine. I... <laughs> I don't get off the Tim Miller train until I see him for the seventh time on MSNBC in one yeah. day yeah. talking about everything under the sun. And I like, you know what? You could do better. You Put Digby on. For God's yeah. sakes, put Digby on. Put Blue Gal on. Put Nicole Sandler on. Put put um, Escaton, Atrios, Duncan Black on. I will go down a list of 20 people. Put Charlie Pierce on there twice as much as you do, which is now almost never. Yeah, and the, all these guys are speaking from their homes, right? On a webcam, is, it's no longer about access to no. the limousine. 
from MSNBC bringing you to the studio. So stop it. Um, uh, if I'm, you, you want to tell a fun story briefly about Blogger, right? Yes. Your blog. Blogger, the Blogger is, a, is the is the Google owned software that you can put blogs on. And, and it's old school. It's old school, very old school. And I, you know, it creaks and it cranks and they've been making it more and more difficult for blogger users to use blogger because they, they want to really get rid of it. They really want yeah. to kill it, but there's too many yeah. people blogging on it. Yeah. But they have recently dispatched uh, bots into the bowels of everyone's archives, I assume, not just mine. And I've had a bunch of posts from like 2005 and seven <laughs> and 11 unpublished. And blogger says, by, blog, uh, by Google, Google has let you blogger. know this. Bl- blogger okay. sends me notice the blogger team, which would do a uh, great job guys. And I, I, this is not a complaint about you. Um, which out of 11,000 posts over 17 years is a pretty good number. Mm-hmm. But I get, they're, un, they're unpublished and I can appeal that if I fix whatever the hell it is uh, for promoting malware and or viruses. So like, these old posts apparently have something in them that's got malware right. on it. And, you know, okay. I gave up. I gave up sending malware out to my users in like 2007. So <laughs> it got boring. I, yeah, I, I, yeah it, was, it was fun for a while, but it, it didn't last. So I gave that up. And I went looking, and the one thing every post has in common was a link to the infamous old school wingnut conspiracy site, World Net Daily. Oh, my gosh. And I zapped all the links, and Blogger approved the posts, and they went right back into, into circulation. Huh. Um, world so Net Daily. World Net Daily. Yeah. World Net Daily is the progenitor of all the shitty Breitbart Owen yeah. bullshit yeah. from back in the day, way back, the conspiracy, yeah. UFO, Clinton murder, yeah. all that stuff from the 90s. Yeah. And they are now being tagged as, this is almost too perfect, as a malware super spreader site that you should avoid at all costs. I'm huh. like, bravo, blogger. I did, yeah. This came in through the back door, but I'm so pleased to see them being sort of blown out of the water because political malware is what they've been in the business of selling for 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Well, wasn't and, that the the granddaughter or daughter in Tim Miller's book? Yes, that her daughter. dad started World Net Daily, and she yep. wasn't going to vote for Trump. And he, his his yeah. whole life was: we finally got a candidate who oh. comes from the World Net Daily platform of values. Right. And right? Trump Trump finally you know reached out a hand and, and recognized him and thanked him. Yeah. And like, yeah, I finally have one of my lunatics in the White House. Yeah, and yeah. after four years. His own daughter said, no, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. But yeah, yeah World Net Daily is now a, a super spreader of bad viruses as opposed to just bad ideas. So, yay. Would you like to know what happened to Mark Halperin? <laughs> no. No. Well, <laughs> but you're going to tell me anyway. I, I will just say I'm flipping through the channels at the deep, far, crazy He's end of the- playing steeplechase, folks. I am. I am. And I go up and to And remind Newsmax. everyone, steeplechase is when he- goes from watching CNN or MSNBC and goes into Newsmax and uh, Fox just to and, see what the and, Chirons and say. Just right? yeah, what, What's everyone doing at this exact moment altogether? Right, right. And what do I see in Newsmax but Mark Halperin, mm-hmm. who's apparently sitting in his Mima's spare bedroom, uh, <laughs> and he's still Mark Halperin. And he's talking yeah. about the radical Biden lefty agenda and mm. his bad comb over and his pink tie and his Mark Halperin utterly flat affect and he's like he really is because you, you all know that mark halperin was like the number one beltway hack who never found anything but joy in everything republicans did because no matter what happened it was always good news for the republican party and the democrats were always in disarray and he, and he was, was suspended once for calling obama kind of a dick it was we came up with the halperin interval which was yep you get 30 days suspension for doing stupid shit. And he did stupid shit on the Morning Joe show. But Mika Brzezinski tried repeatedly to get him back on the air because after, he's there. After charges, legitimate yeah. charges of severe yeah. sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah. Yes. Rubbing his breaking news all over somebody who didn't want yeah. it rubbed all over them. Right. In an and elevator. Yeah. So being an unconscionably hackish, awful, toxic goof is not a disqualifier. It's, it gets you promoted. But- Mm-hmm. Sexual harassment, yeah, you got to go. And that's happened repeatedly, and that's a very good thing. But, of course, there's always the safety net of the worst of the worst. So that's where he landed, at Newsmax. And looking at him there and looking at him on Meet the Press, he's like a political Roomba, you know? <laughs> you, just, you, t- you plug him into whatever room you're in, and he just goes about doing the Mark Halpern thing wherever he is, whatever you want him to say. He just goes about and does it. 
and he is trading on the last dregs of his reputation. Name recognition. Name yeah. recognition, period. But there is yes. always a place for these people. They will always find a spot, even if it's at the ass end of the table, eating the worst food at Newsmax, they'll still find a place for people like Mark Halpern, no matter how f- far they fall. Okay, we're going to do a brief moment of housekeeping <clears throat> and let you know our update on our plans to provide you guys with more content. Um, we've done, we've run the numbers. <laughs> we have. <laughs> what, what it's going to take in terms of time, energy, and ability uh, in terms of doing either a YouTube channel or another hour long show during the week, um, audio show. And we have heard from different listeners saying, I wish you were on two or three times a week as a podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, people want us to do something on YouTube. Right. And uh, which is a little more technically complicated, but we're smart people and can figure that out. Yep. And I want to thank Cal Sparks for offering to help us yeah, he's with whatever we want to do. Really um, helpful. Yeah. But the fact is that the time and the energy and the ability to do it can't be done unless we have the resources, the financial resources to take on that much time out of yeah. our week. To subtract that amount of time from our week. Yeah. yeah. So um, what we need, and we've, we really have run the numbers on this, what we really need in order to do either a set of u- videos so that we have that much more content or another hour long podcast, audio podcast, we need 300 new Patreon supporters yeah. to do that second show or that third and fourth small show on U- YouTube. What I want to know is, is what our listeners want. Right. What do you do want? you want another hour of audio? Uh, do you want a couple of under 30 minute live videos during the week? Um, we currently have 254 Patreons. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. For being a Patreon donor. Thank you for being a PayPal donor. Thank you for the buy me coffees. Whatever you are already doing, please don't stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what we need is additional support. And, um, you know, Chapo Trap House, which has a lot more listeners than we do, has over 36,000 Patreons. So... Here's what I promise you. We are not going to go to advertising because I don't want that headache. I just can't deal with it. Um, But I am going to get better at asking you guys to support this show so we can continue to make content and make additional content. Yes. And so this is the beginning of our Patreon drive. And the reason I chose Patreon, they're all the same in terms of how much money that platform takes off the top to, to enable us to get your money. I'm going to be frank about it. Um, but Patreon allows you to contact us directly a lot more easily than PayPal or other right. places. And now, um, now, mind you, we still take cash in the mail. Oh, yeah. Don't, Checks don't and cash that, in the mail, sure. just great. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, we've gotten some lovely uh, anniversary cards in the mail, and thank you very much for those. Um, but I'm going to get better at asking you listeners to support the show so that we can continue to make additional content. And this is the beginning of our Patreon drive to create additional content, either audio or video. If you become a new Patreon, you have an opportunity to let me know in the comments there what it is you want in terms of additional content. Um, and I am going to be tracking how we, how our audience responds to this uh, through Patreon so that I can keep track of you know, what we're getting and how people are responding. And so let us know, do you want an extra hour of audio every week or do you want videos and uh, become a patron, become a patron of our show, five bucks a month. You can do $60 a year. They now have annual uh, Patreons and uh, we're not asking for more than five bucks a month from any one person, but if you can, that's great. You're helping other people who can't. Uh, We always have the gourmet coffee guideline here. You know, we don't ask people who can't afford to do it to donate, but those fans who can afford to do it, we need your support so that we can afford ourselves to provide you with additional content. So we're still at about we're still at about one percent or less who are oh yeah we're supporters. Well, and that's I've said this before. If you get a mailing from Habitat for Humanity, they expect. One to two percent response. Yeah, that's that's not that's a reflection on the for on anyone raising money out there. Exactly. That's normal. Well, um, and, and you should know that the reason the blue gal will not let us take advertising is because she is planning her own gold and uh, prepper supplement package. <laughs> 
oh, yeah. you'll be able to buy for a ridiculously low price. Can't say what it is now. Miracle weight be, loss cure. You'd be you'd be crazy <laughs> not to buy the miracle weight loss cure and gold <laughs> for the end of the world that we are offering. Hail uh, Satan. Um, Hail by the Satan. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Driftless, you want to talk about Keith Olbermann. I, I do, because this is when podcasts collide. I listen to many, many podcasts. In, you listen in to preparation. a lot more than I do. I do. I, I listen, I, even I listen to Keith Olbermann every once in a while. I do. I do keep my ear to the ground. And I was able to hook up, not hook up, I think, I think so. Um, Keith Olbermann, one of our friends at the Heartland Pod, which is a Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri-based podcast run by wonderful people who do great work. And Keith Olbermann mentioned briefly that Mike Pillow... Uh, had bitterly complained about the great search engine conspiracy <laughs> because his weird meetup in Springfield, Missouri, uh, wasn't being covered by quote Google and all them. Uh, they were against him finding. They were against him uh, getting the advertising or people finding out about his big election conspiracy tent revival. Uh, it was so difficult, and it was all a conspiracy, which is very sad. It just so happens that the ladies and gentlemen at the Heartland Pod had on ace reporter Galen Bacarrier of the Springfield News Leader, who covered Mike Pillow's Springfield Freak Show. Oh, for heaven's sake. So there was and a local reporter there. He wow. was. And he was the only legitimate news reporter who was there because he tried over and over again to find out details about the event from the event organizers and from Mike Pillow's media spokesperson, and he was blown off every time because mm -hmm. they didn't mm -hmm. want people who weren't true believers showing up. Yeah. And other than the usual collection of orcs and hobgoblins from the infrared end of the wingnut media, uh, it appears that he was the only guy from the legitimate media who showed up. And the heroic efforts to keep everyone else away worked. And then, of course, he could turn around and say, Google and them didn't do my thing and I didn't go my sand about that. That's mm -hmm. why the world doesn't know that I expose the truth at my great big revival. Although he so, didn't, he didn't invite a single legitimate oh God, news reporter no, to his no. event. He wanted Newsmax to cover it, and that's but they it. kept it. Yeah. They kept it secret and undercover to the last minute, and then bitched that nobody showed up at, because they're conspiring against him. Yeah, which yeah. the latter part is Oberman's wheelhouse, and the yeah. former part is why we have local media, <laughs> actual yes. local news reporters. And so I Not highly Sinclair. recommend, yeah, I highly <laughs> yeah. recommend going over to the Heartland Pod and looking up Galen Picarier's, uh interview and his story in the Springfield paper. Not Springfield, Illinois. There's a usually confusion to that effect. Uh, Springfield, Missouri, which is across the river and halfway across the state. All right, and now it's time for a news roundup. The Bidening continues in a 36-page court filing. Federal prosecutors said Trump's representatives falsely claimed that a, quote, diligent search, unquote, had been conducted and all sensitive material had been returned. Quote, the government also developed evidence that government records were likely concealed and removed from the storage room and that efforts were likely taken to obstruct the government's investigation. Oopsie. Justice Department Counterintelligence Chief Jay Bratt wrote more than 100 additional classified items. 100. Mm-hmm. Additional classified items were found during the August 6th search, oh, excuse me, August 8th search, including three classified documents in desks inside Trump's office and material so sensitive that even the FBI counterintelligence personnel and DOJ attorneys conducting the review required additional clearances before they were permitted to review certain documents. In total, more than 320 classified documents have now been recovered from Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. Twice as many were taken out by the FBI than Trump turned over and then swore that they had them all. There were no more. You can just leave me alone now. And it's it's open and shut. There really isn't anything else, any place else for him to go. Um, this is from the Washington Post today. Ginny Thomas pressed Wisconsin lawmakers to overturn Biden's 2020 election. The conservative activist and wife of the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas emailed lawmakers in two states in the weeks after the election. 76% of young female voters in key battleground states opposed the Supreme Court's decision to strike down the constitutional right to an abortion, while 18% support it. Among young Republican women, 
57% oppose the Dobbs decision, while 36% support it. And we'll just have to see whether these women are gerrymandered and they're living in cities where, you know, their vote has been watered down or not before Mm -hmm. we find out if the House is in play for Democrats. Uh, The Education Department will discharge another $1.5 billion in student debt for students who enrolled in Westwood College. The Education Department found that 79,000 borrowers who attended Westwood College, a private for-profit institution that closed in 2016, were, quote, routinely misled about their job prospects and expected earnings after graduation. One additional point to this story is Joe Walsh was on the uh, social media today questioning whether it's legal for any president to do this sort of thing. And 50 people showed up and said, it's called the HEROES Act. It was passed by George Bush Mm -hmm. in 2003 Mm -hmm. explicitly by the Congress to give a president the right to do this very thing. So shut up. And weren't you a lawmaker? Why don't you know this? The Labor Department reported that there were 11.2 million job openings in July, up from the previous month's 11 million and in excess of the 10.3 million estimated. Job openings outnumber available workers by about a two to one margin and have remained above 10 million since the summer of 2021. Wow. Thanks, Dark Brandon. Uh, Lindsey Graham warned there would be riots in the streets if Trump is prosecuted for stealing and hiding highly classified documents. I'm sorry. Let me reread that. Yeah. Lindsey Graham warned that there would be riots in the streets if Trump is prosecuted for stealing and hiding highly classified documents at Mar-a-Lago after leaving the White House. This was before the photo. Yeah. This is terrorism. It is. What do they call it? Stochastic? Stochastic terrorism. Terrorism. It's yep. it's using your words to provoke and incite, and then stepping away when it actually happens, and saying, "I I didn't I didn't actually." You know, I was like just confused. predicting, which is I, what he did. He went yeah. to Fox and said, "I was just predicting. I wasn't prescribing." And then he said, "I never said such thing." And then people said, "It's on videotape, Lindsay." And then Lindsay got drunk and cried and went away. The, you know, Lindsey Graham is a piece of shit, and yeah. uh, that's just what he is. The question is whether his Republican colleagues in the Senate give a damn. And I don't think they do. No, they, they don't. They let Trump they get away with it. They, they don't give a shit. They no. don't give a shit. Oh, you mean Mitt Romney hasn't quit the Republican Party yet? No. Shocking. This is shocking. To Trump me. demanded that the 2020 presidential election be, be declared irreparably compromised and that a new one be held immediately or just appoint him president. And that's the day that I declared I was queen of the world. Junior dude was not impressed with that. He no. said, Mom, no. Mom, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, somebody spray painted the word sup on a random Ron Johnson campaign sign, and Johnson collapsed in tears because that was the death of civility in politics and the end of the republic. Very sad. <laughs> um, editor's note. Sup, S-U-P question mark? Sup, on, on a random sign, somebody spray painted it, and that was the not, end of the republic. Not fuck Ron Johnson or anything no. like just sup. Sup. Uh, <laughs> clearly... <laughs> Ron Johnson has never visited the city of Chicago during the campaign season at any point since the days of George Wellington Streeter, Patty Baller, and Mayor Big Bill Thompson. Because, Seriously. Brother, let me tell you, campaign Stop. season <laughs> campaign season in Chicago is wild and always has been because that's how politics works, you dumb, yeah. dumb Russian asset. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Joe Biden this week said it's not patty cake, but you don't run around saying there's going to be blood in the streets. Yeah. Blood in the streets is okay, but Peyton sup on someone's sign sup. <laughs> is the end of the Republic and the darkest day our nation. It really is. Uh, I'm going to remember that as the death of civility. It is. It's sup. our, it's our nine 11, honey. And, uh, <laughs> you know, oh God, very, very sad. And we were there. I'll, I'll always remember where I was the day I found out about sup being sup. painted on Ron John, a, a random Ron Johnson sign. So, <laughs> And it wasn't posted by World Net Daily. It was posted by Ron Johnson, <laughs> who allegedly knows better. But, you know, oh God. As, a, as a Russian asset and a moron, maybe he doesn't Not know today, better. Satan. Yeah. I don't care if it is episode 666. All yeah. right. Over in Missouri, Eric Schmidt is running for the Senate on his record as the state's petty tyrant attorney general who helped get lots of people killed from COVID. I'm proud to have led the country in the fight against COVID tyranny at all levels of government, fighting for parents, kids, small business owners, and workers. 
The heiress Valentine is just another liberal lockdown queen. The heiress Valentine refers to Trudy Bush Valentine. I guess she's of the Bush beer fortune, right? She is. Uh, she's running for the U.S. Senate as a Democrat. Yeah, Anheuser yeah. Bush. She's got she's got McCain money, Cindy McCain yeah. money, right? Oh yeah, and you know, again, right in front of us, another death of the republic and the end of civil- yes, civilization. End of civility. Okay. Uh, this week, Prager U scammer and former serious person Dennis Prager announced that quote women are disproportionately hurting this country. So that girls would pay attention to him. He wrote a whole article on how women are disproportionately hurting this country, including certain women on the Supreme Court. He cried because and cried. he wanted girls to pay attention to him, and they did. He ran up to <laughs> he ran up to his room, one eye over his shoulder, hoping they'd follow him up there to comfort him, and no one did. <laughs> sad, very sad. It's amazing he's been married three times. Oh, shocking! Shocking. Yeah. 71% of Americans approve of labor unions. That is the highest since 1965. Uh, I'm one of them. And if I belong to, if I had a Life job long. in a thing, yeah. I'd be, I was actually in a teacher's union, the temp teacher's union at Columbia College. Mm-hmm. My parents, uh, my mom at least, and uh, teachers in my family were all unions. They'd go my on dad strike. was in AFSME oh, man. in yep. Pennsylvania. Yep. Yep. Uh, Joe Biden's approval rating is up 6% points since July, but MAGAs are reporting his ratings are down 7 because they can't read. Yeah. The Biden administration will end its free at-home COVID-19 test program this week due to a lack of funding from Congress. Uh, you want to go over and listen to Andy Slavitt's podcast. Uh, yeah. his, he has excellent, excellent guests on public health and solutions to these kind of problems, and I really recommend it. Um, the DOJ's public response to Trump's motion for judicial oversight is really a wonder to behold. You have to ask, how many times did clerks have to comb over it to make sure all the references to this fucking traitor and holy hell, can you believe this pile of shit ass bag just marched himself right into a guilty plea? The DOJ slammed Trump over his frivolous legal arguments and pointed out that the documents at issue don't belong to him. And any request to return the documents now are moot because the Department of Justice has already reviewed all the documents and any potential attorney-client privilege records have been separated by the DOJ filter team. And that's their whole job, to filter out stuff that other people shouldn't see. Mm -hmm. Also, Trump's motion opened the door to making all of this public and all of the attendant photos public so way to go man just buying rakes by the job again they only spoke through a filing in the court right they didn't go on newsmax they didn't go on msnbc they did a filing in the court and again donald trump what you say in court has to be true you can't just believe it's true you can't assert it's true so that your stupid followers will believe it's true it has to be true and you're really Mm -hmm. having a hard time living up to that standard he is This is something I have known for a long time, but it's nice to see it confirmed. There are more laws banning transgender girls from playing K through 12 sports than there are transgender girls playing K through 12 sports. From Time Magazine, what makes this issue of trans sports different and so explosive politically is because politicians are willing to talk about it. Well, of course they are. Uh It's it's moral panic. Uh, The president of the conservative advocacy group American Principles Project, which you know is a 501c3, Uh APP spent over $5 million in the 2020 election, combined with their affiliated super PAC on ads arguing Democrats' support for trans athletes poses a threat to women's sports, as if they give a shit about women's sports, among other messaging points. This is just moral panic. Same this, as it ever was. FYI, this leached into many, many episodes of our allies at the Bulwarks podcast. Yeah. Anyway, continue, please. While Republican lawmakers claim the bans are designed to protect women. Yeah, again, I'm calling bullshit on that. Rather than to discriminate against a vulnerable group, LGBTQ advocates argue they are a solution in search of a problem. There are vanishingly few examples nationwide of trans athletes attempting to compete at all because they're afraid of what's happening Mm -hmm. with these bozos. 
And those that do are subject to local policies and local coaches and local teams. Beth Steiser, the founder of the group Save Women's Sports, which advocates for banning trans girls from women's athletics, says she can verify five examples in the country of trans girls in K-12 through who have played women's sports. In Kentucky, LGBTQ advocates say only one known trans athlete, Fisher Wells, was playing in the state when Kentucky legislature overrode the Democratic governor's veto in April, banning her from the field hockey team. In Utah, four trans kids out of an estimated 75,000 kids were known to be playing high school sports when the state legislature passed its trans sports ban in March, and only one was playing on a girls' team. Utah Governor Spencer Cox, a Republican, vetoed the legislation on March 22nd, citing in part the handful of children being targeted, four kids who aren't dominating or winning trophies or taking scholarship, four kids who are just trying to find some friends and feel like they are part of something, he said in a statement explaining his veto. Rarely has so much fear and anger been directed at so few. The Utah State Legislature overrode his veto three days later, banning four students from the athletic field. Because they're Republicans. Unfor- you know, the, I got to say, I give, I give a clap to the governor of mm-hmm. Utah, who is a Republican, mm-hmm. and who did veto this shit, mm-hmm. and who said all the right things. And I don't know Utah politics, but I will give that guy uh, a standing round of applause before I give Liz Cheney one hand clapping. Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. of course, the the Republican legislature just swept in and said, "Nope, nope, we're gonna we're gonna make these the lives of these kids miserable because that'll get us a few more votes, yeah, in a few fall. more votes from from bigots, these yeah. fucking people." Uh, in local news, Richard Uline, the crackpot right wing billionaire who funds half the lunatic projects and think tanks in Illinois has rooted around in his sofa cushions and come up with a million dollars to contribute to Darren Bailey's doomed campaign. Where's the sound of toilet flushing? That's what we need to insert here. This is literally the definition definition of money to burn is this million dollars. Yep. Yep. Upstate from us in Downers Grove, the public library has announced a drag performance planned as part of Drag Queen Bingo event on Tuesday, October 11th at the library. The event is targeted to children in grades 7 through 12 and has caused all the usual GOP hysterics. Keith Pekow, mayor of Orland Park and GOP nominee for Congress in Illinois 6th District, released the following statement. I join parents across the district in denouncing this event, just as I would denounce a library introducing kids to straight sex by holding a burlesque show. To be clear, I have no interest in regulating the private consensual activities and decisions of adults. This event, however, targets children, it's inappropriate, and an unacceptable use of taxpayer funds. Fun fact, no taxpayer funds are being used for the event. They're all awful, Blue Gal. They're all just awful. You know, if you don't want your kids to go to Drag Queen Bingo, I feel sorry for you, because I think your kids would have fun at Drag Queen Bingo, but that's your choice as a parent. I think No one is forcing you to take them. This isn't... Our bi- this isn't Hail Satan bingo, which is what we would do. <laughs> These are a bunch of nice guys dressed up as women doing bingo for fun with a bunch of kids at an event. It's fun. It's harmless. It's joyful. And these sour, dried up, despicable harridans and harremans of the right can't stand it. This is the gay agenda. This Why is- do you want to kill fun? <laughs> AIDS is God's punishment. Yeah, they, right. They it's never, that. Yeah. ever get over this shit. They never yeah. stop. They're always looking for a way back into power. And the way that they always get back into power is to find the monkey brain part of the rights hate center and press it as hard as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Malcolm. Malcolm is a one and a half year old Jewish kitty from Park Slope, Brooklyn. He moved to this Tony liberal neighborhood from his birthplace of Savannah, Georgia. So he's got blue dot red state chops. (laughs) He wants you to know that he hates Ted Cruz, loves to bite feet, and would like you to know that in spite of his celebrity status, it is important to leave him alone while he's sleeping. Wow, we know cats like that. Yeah. 
And of course, Malcolm Loves Freshly Poured Cat Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Malcolm. He's a beautiful kitty. He's got a half and half nose. Half his nose is gray and half of his nose is pink. And he's a beautiful kitty. You can visit him at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Fire to joy. Hashtag fire to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We are in the middle of a Patreon drive. And we'd appreciate your support and your input as to whether you want another hour of audio or some video. All of our information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, send us five bucks. That's a great way to let us know you liked a specific episode. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties deeply resent having to go all the way to Downers Grove if they want to see a kid-friendly drag show. Thanks, Satan. And let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Life Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2022, DGBG Productions Incorporated.